Hi everyone, it's Erin from EB Mixed Media, and today I am going to be working in one of my most favorite journals. This is a cheap uh, notebook that I purchased for about $5. It is filled with this very thin graph paper. I glue several sheets together uh, to make um, the pages thicker so that it can handle mixed media. So today my inspiration is using some of this under paper that uh, was on my desk, uh, on my art table. Um, and I just think it's really cool. So that is something I've been saving and wanting to use. So that's what I'm going to do today and try to make this work. So let's start. I think I'll cut this in half this big sheet or just cut out this section here to make it easier to work with. Okay. I'm going to tear it just to have a kind of rough edge, I think. Is there any section I like better than others? I think I prefer this. Let's do that. Let's not use this. There's not enough interest over here. It's the striping and the vertical lines that I really am liking here. So I'm going to get a ruler and I'm just going to tear down the page right about there and you can tear it right there as well okay let me get my glue stick and we'll glue this down so I've been asked how how I get my ideas for journal pages. And it really is, I just generally start by either finding a piece of paper I like in my stash or a color scheme that speaks to me from a piece of paper in my stash. And then, or it might be a focal point that I wanna showcase and find a home for. That might inspire me on a page. And other than that, I usually don't have much more in my head when I sit down than just that. I guess that is what you call, where'd my page go? Oh, <laughs> intuitive art, right? I just go with the flow. All righty. So here we are. Let's get out some gesso. I'm very excited to be back using Liquitex, brand new bottle here. Um, I have been using a cheaper brand for a long time, which I wasn't too fond of, but didn't want to waste it. So we'll go back to the Liquitex and see if my memory of it is as good as the reality. <laughs> And what I want to do here is just sort of fade this edge into the page. And then I think I will bring out some more gesso this direction. just for some more interest over here. I do like leaving some of these grid lines to show. All right, uh, I'm gonna use this peachy pink. I'm pretty sure that's that color in there. I don't know, I don't want too much of it, but again, it's, it's that idea of blending it blending what I just pasted down 
onto the page so that it looks more like it belongs there as opposed to the fact that I just slapped it down. Let's get a little of this golden sunset that I'm pretty sure is that color there. Oops, that was probably more than I needed. Put a little bit of that in some places. I'm liking how that's looking. Hmm. So to to balance this out over here, but to not take away from this, I want something over here to give weight to the page. But as I said, I don't want to take away from this. So I'm feeling like a book page is probably my best bet. So I'm going to just get a plain old dictionary page rather than use some of my really nice pages. I can get this torn the way I'm envisioning it. <laughs> oh no, don't do well no, that might actually work. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't even know. Okay, let's just try that. So I don't have a lot of time to work today, so I'm kind of hurrying. Um, and sometimes I find that that works really well. doesn't give you a lot of time to second guess yourself if you kind of are on the clock, so to speak. So I'd encourage you, even if you have a lot of time, to experiment with uh, setting a timer and seeing how, um, how you do when you have some time constraints and you have to just make fast decisions, not dilly dally, not second guess, and just get going sometimes your best work can come out of that. Let's go, there's a lot of gold I think over here, so let's pull that in. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I'm gonna dry this. So all this black over here, no black over here bothering me. So I have more of that paper. And it is slightly angled, so we'll slightly angle it here. I think that'll work. Trim this. So if you haven't thought to use your under paper, I would really encourage you to consider it. Um, it can just look like such a hot mess when you um, have it underneath your artwork and you're working on it. But uh, when you 
start working it into your piece. Man, oh man, can it be cool. You would be amazed at how a piece of seemingly random kind of junky looking paper can look so good in a finished piece. Okay, now I wanna bring a few more of the colors over here, over here. So let me grab those. I'm pretty sure these little dots are this, which is um, bubblegum pink from Dilutions, and I'm pretty sure this is a stencil that I was using. So let's let's just go with it. Good. Uh, some more of this green. The green is olive green from Amsterdam. I only need a tiny smidgen. <laughs> smidgen is what we used to call my youngest boy. Uh, he, when he was a baby, he was such a big baby and everybody always commented on what a big baby he was. And for some reason, I don't know if I necessarily took offense to it, but it kind of bothered me. <laughs> and so I would always say, you know, he's not big, he's just a little smidgen. <laughs> so uh, whenever I say that word, that's I think of him, smidgen. that got me a purple that's good okay all right so now I'm seeing some stamps and I'm gonna grab those this is archival ink in garden patina and archival ink and cactus flower. I love how this is turning out. I really love it. So I had my camera turned off. I just came back in and added a few of these uh, florals here or botanicals again with that garden patina i really like how this is looking like the woods in the summer with just bursting with color um these sort of look like trees um i do like it i like it a lot so as i think of summer um and a garden i'm thinking about butterflies i've got these tim holtz stamps i don't know if they're butterflies <laughs> i think they're moths and I've got some tissue paper. Rather than stamp onto the page that's sort of uneven, I don't know if I'll get a good stamp. I thought I would stamp on this tissue paper, which I can then place on the top. Oh, I think my stamp is pad is out of ink. That's pretty good. Let's see if this will work. A good way to get a nice um, organic edge is to use a wet brush. Around these. And then they'll tear. one hooks. Yeah. See how they're just Ah. Ah. 
Okay. Oh my God. I'm gonna see if I can salvage that. Sometimes hurrying isn't a good thing. <laughs> and that's what's happening here. And my hands are sticky. I think that's my issue. Okay, that was a trial. I've got some Mod Podge here to take these down. And the reason I want to avoid a straight edge is it just blends in better on the page. That looks great. Now it's going on white, it will dry clear. I wanna add a few splatters to our page. There's already some on here. Perfect, I'll dry that. Gotta have a little gold bling. Just a bit here and there. And a sentiment to round it out at the end here. And I think this one is great. Always be on the lookout for the presence of wonder. And I think that's so true in nature. So. Oh, what happened there? I don't know. We're gonna fix it though. And to make that blend in a little bit better, we're gonna put some faux splatters here. Okay, now back to our sentiment. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna do that. Well, it's crooked. I always get these crooked. There. That's great. And that kind of is, um, this kind of has two meanings, to be on the lookout for the presence of wonder in nature, but also to remember the presence of wonder on your art desk. <laughs> and some of these scraps, some of these things that could be considered garbage can turn out to be a beautiful work of art. Um, I love how this turned out. I think it's fabulous. So I'm going to leave it there. It's a fun, quick page. I hope you enjoyed it. You can always find me on Instagram as well, EB Mixed Media. That's EB underscore Mixed Media. And I will leave you to the rest of your day. Have a good one. Bye.